Hello everyone, I'm Jensen, your digital content producer. It is Monday, August 10th, and I'm about to get you all caught up on today's top headlines. So a couple of things we're gonna look at today. Uh, a Lucas County Sheriff's deputy has been removed from his position after he made inappropriate comments. And the future is looking bleak for college football this year, but I'll get into that all in a second, plus some more stories. But before we dive too deep into anything, I wanna get you updated on the latest coronavirus data. So. A little bit of behind the scenes here, numbers on Monday do tend to be a little bit lower because we're coming off of a weekend. So sometimes labs aren't reporting or they're not open. So you get the clearest picture of what's going on mid week, the more you know. But with keeping that in mind, things are actually looking pretty decent right now. Over the last 24 hours, 883 new cases were reported, which is way below the 21 day average of 1,217. There have been just four coronavirus related deaths noted since yesterday, which is obviously much less than the average of 23. Hospitalizations are at 64 compared to the 21 day average of 96. And ICU admissions seem to be sticking right around the average with 15 since yesterday compared to the current average of 16. And again, we should wait until closer to Wednesday to get a better picture of if these trends are sticking around. But right now, those numbers are encouraging. So way to go, Ohio. Unfortunately, things aren't looking quite as good for the future of college football. The Big Ten held a vote with league presidents opting by a 12 to 2 margin to not have a fall football season. Uh, Nebraska and Iowa were the dissenters in that vote, but a spokesperson did say that a formal vote hasn't actually happened yet because I guess they just want to drag this out for us, don't they? But the word is that an official announcement should be on the way tomorrow, so keep your eyes peeled for that. But this unofficial vote comes after weeks of speculation over the viability of having a college football season during the pandemic. Uh, in fact, on Saturday, leaders with the Mid-American Conference announced that they would be postponing fall sports until the spring. And it seems like the Big Ten has really set the pace for the other Power Five conferences throughout this whole process. Last month, the Big Ten announced it would be moving to a 10-game conference-only schedule for 2020. And pretty soon after, the SEC, ACC, Big 12, and Pac-12 followed suit. So after the official announcement comes, hopefully tomorrow, all eyes will really be on the other four uh, to see if they move forward with the same strategy but as fair warning things are looking pretty grim right now yesterday espn reported that the power five commissioners had a had an emergency meeting to discuss all of this and they said that at least the postponement of the football season it did seem inevitable so kind of sad there but uh, there might be some good news, hopefully, on the professional team front. Um, Governor Mike DeWine said last week that a big announcement is coming this week in terms of the Browns and the Bengals. So, uh, yeah, keep your ears open. Hopefully, we get some good news if you're into football. But let's turn towards schools a little bit here. As most of you already know, last week, the Regional Board of Health recommended that Lucas County schools start the year remotely. And that of course inspired a lot of districts to switch up their original plans, but not all of them chose to do so. So I'm gonna go through here um, and talk about the Lucas County schools that we do know what they've announced so far um, and kind of keep you posted on what their plans are as of right now. So Anthony Wayne will be sticking with its original plan to start the year on a hybrid model of in-person and online classes beginning August 27th. No decision has been made on the fate of fall sports just yet. Mommy has taken a major turn after first planning to go back in person five days a week. Now they will be going virtually and no decision has been made for sports for them either. Oregon's going all virtual and will be delaying fall sports and extracurriculars. And that remote learning begins August 24th with full implementation on the 31st. Ottawa Hills is starting on August 24th remotely with a goal to start in-person learning by September 8th, five days a week. Fall sports is set to continue with proper OHSSA guidelines and procedures in place. Springfield approved a plan on Friday to return to school remotely on August 31st. An optional hybrid style orientation will be taking place the week before to ready students for the virtual learning environment and to get out Chromebooks to students who might need them. St. John's has already started its school year with kids going in person five days a week and at this point nothing has changed. St. Ursula is also sticking with its initial plan, which allows parents to choose whether their kids should go in person or stay home. As of right now, Sylvania is going to be starting the year off remotely with more information on that plan on the way here pretty shortly, and no decision has been made quite yet on the future of sports or extracurriculars. 
TPS is falling right in line with the Board of Health, starting off virtually and delaying fall sports until at least October 1st. And finally, Washington Local will be kicking the year off virtually as well, and I have yet to see anything about sports from them, but they do have a pretty comprehensive education plan on their website right now, so you can check that out. And DeWine also said that a, an announcement about back-to-school plans about Ohio as a whole should be coming sometime tomorrow during his press conference. So stay tuned on that. We'll keep you updated if anything changes with those back to school plans. But sticking in Lucas County here for a second, a sheriff's deputy has lost his job after making inappropriate comments both in person and on Facebook. Uh, Sergeant Samuel Meisinger was fired today after two internal affairs investigations found that he was violating four different rules. So in the first incident, my singer made comments on his Facebook page thanking the FBI for draining the black swamp after four Toledo City Council members were arrested for that bribes for votes scheme back on June 30th. And the second incident was back in February while he was working at the Lucas County Jail. During his shift, a black woman was being booked and she was naked in her cell. She had removed her jumpsuit, but soon after put it back on, a female officer had gone to inform my singer that the inmate had indeed put her clothes back on. And my singer said, quote, good, we can stop watching the National Geographic show. That officer filed a complaint about those comments, and apparently in that same shift, Meisinger was found cursing at two other inmates. But what's interesting is that uh, Meisinger had thrown his hat in the ring to replace Sheriff Tharp, who is set to retire this year, uh, but since the primary, the officers are now down to Mike Navarre, Brett Warner, and Earl Mack. And Tharp had said that law enforcement is held to a higher standard, so he said that the removal of Meisinger was the best choice. And in case you missed it, over the weekend, President Donald Trump bypassed Congress to sign an executive order deferring payroll taxes and replacing the expired unemployment benefit. But before I get too deep into this, I do feel like I need to explain that there is some debate over whether or not he can actually issue this order constitutionally. So there might be some legal trouble coming. It might delay the process here. Um, but say it is found constitutional. Let's take a look at what he actually ordered. Unemployment benefits would go from the additional $600 provided by the CARES Act to 400, and 100 of that is expected to be provided by the states themselves, many of which are already struggling financially because of the pandemic. President Trump did say, however, that $44 billion has been set aside that was already approved for disaster aid to help states, but it would ultimately be up to the states about how much, if any, to fund so the benefits could still be smaller. So the order is also called for a deferral of payroll tax and federal student loan payments and efforts to halt evictions. Trump said the employee portion of the payroll tax would be deferred from August 1st through the end of the year. Um, and that move would not directly aid unemployed workers because they aren't paying the tax when they're jobless. And employees would need to repay the federal government eventually without an act of Congress. So essentially this is a zero interest loan. The president said if he's reelected, he may extend and terminate, but he hasn't yet explained how he would then fund Medicare or Social Security benefits, which is what that tax on paychecks goes toward. So that is all I have for you today. Uh, feel free to drop your questions. I'll do my best to answer them. And for the rest of the top headlines, feel free to check out our broadcast too. We've got one at 6 and 11 left tonight. So head over to Channel 11 and get all your latest news stories. But until then, have a happy Monday.